wonder if this is how they actually test them out. Good morning my fellow allotment friends, my name is Emma, these are my allotment diaries. I would love for you to go down now and just subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of my uploads because we are now in the middle of May and things are really happening at the allotment plot. I would hate for you to miss out so go below, click subscribe, um, click the little bell as well and you'll be notified every time I upload a video you will get a notification. So if I'm late with an upload or something you'll, you won't miss it. So. We had the most beautiful weekend. It was so warm in the UK, um, particularly in London. It was just sunny, beautiful, in the garden the whole weekend. Got loads and loads of jobs done in my home garden. Just come down here and guys, we've had some good news. I don't feel like I get to say it. I've had good news at this allotment plot very often, particularly at this time of year. I'm always, I feel like I'm always saying, oh, it's died, oh, it's terrible. Oh, this is going wrong, oh, I'm so worried. Actually, I've come down here today and I can't believe it, but my sunflowers are all still alive. Considering the weather that we had over the weekend, so I'll tell you a little bit about the weather. It was sunny, but it also rained quite a lot, which makes the perfect environment for slugs and snails, right? It's basically a nice, warm, sunny day, followed by a wet downpour, giving soggy conditions for them. Perfect for slugs and snails, basically. But, but, we've only had one bit of damage. So this one is fine. He's fine, he's doing so well. I just need to twist him around a little bit actually because his stem's getting a bit twisty there, but hopefully it'll sort of grow up. I just want you to grow up, mate, just up. This one here is the one that's had a bit of damage, but having said that, the middle, the middle's okay. I've got some leaves in the middle and I think if the middle goes, it's game over, but I think he's all right in the middle. So hopefully he'll come back to life. And then over here in the broad bean bed where I planted them, that one's fine. And that one's fine, so the sunflowers have survived. I can't actually believe it. And also the broad beans are doing really well. Some of them are getting really, really big now. So this is just excellent news. I was absolutely convinced that they would be gone. So that's a really nice surprise. Down here, I've got my runner beans growing and it, I protected them basically last time I was here and they're growing okay. So a little bit of damage, but actually all right, I think. I think they're gonna be okay, they're growing. I don't know what I'm gonna do if I've got sweet corn germinated. I think I'm gonna have a, a heart attack. Oh my gosh, it's germinated. I'm having a heart attack. Look at all the mushrooms. Look at all the mushrooms. Why is there so many bleeding mushrooms? Look at all those. Is that a good thing? Does that mean my soil's good or something? I don't know. Why is there so many bleeding? Oh look, there's a little slug. Little, big better get rid of him in a minute but anyway sweet corn sweet corn we're looking for sweet corn here here that's a sweet corn and then over here that's a sweet corn and then we've got another one and another one flipping it and then we've got mushrooms so I don't know what that's all about sweet corn sweet corn I can see so much sweet corn this is amazing I've only gone and germinated sweet corn outdoors in May never done that before and I've grown mushrooms so there's an extra bonus that I didn't know about. Do you think I should keep this covered or not? Maybe I'll uncover it. Maybe I'll uncover it. So, I planted out a couple of my... Ah! Scared by a door. All right, hang on a minute. So I planted out a couple of tomato plants here as a bit of a tester, firstly to see if it was warm enough for them to go out and secondly to see what they did in the soil before I put the rest of them out you see. So I like to like sacrifice a couple, well this one has truly been sacrificed to the slugs and snails. I didn't even know they ate tomato plants. I have never ever had a tomato plant eaten by a slug or a snail before, ever in my life, but this one is truly gone, absolutely gone, they loved it. Um, he's still got a leaf, so he might grow back. I'll leave him there. The other one over here, he seems to have survived a slug and snail attack, which is amazing. I'm not really sure how he managed that. Maybe it's because he's so close to the garlic, um, which is just a good reason to keep this garlic in here, really. But yeah, he seems to have survived okay. So I think 
I've learnt a couple of things. I've learnt that firstly, it's time to put your tomatoes out in the poly tunnel and they'll do fine, especially with the night temperatures. They're gonna be fine now, so you can whack them all out. Secondly, you do need to protect them from slugs and snails. Had no idea, had no idea, but there we go. Uh, the kohlrabi is doing really good as well. Oh, this is so exciting. I know they're starting to munch on the leaves now and stuff, but that's fine because this is the bit that I want. That's the bit I want down there. Oh, look at the colour. The colour is so vibrant and beautiful. Even the leaves. Utterly stunning plants. I'm so excited to eat these. I've got a, I believe this is a cauliflower at the back. It's being really munched, but then he's managing to grow in the middle, so I don't know how he's doing that. And then over here I've got my my lovely, oh look, I think some of these might be ready. Look at that. That's a radish that is. So these are bright light radishes. Really, really stunning. They grow so beautiful. Um, mm, really, really good. Not spicy at all. <laughs> stunning. Do you remember when I ate those radishes and they were really spicy? <laughs> I like spat them out. Well, these ones are not. These are so sweet and delicious and crunchy. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I'm surrounded by snails, guys. I'm surrounded by snails. This one's actually on my garlic, so maybe they don't mind garlic. I don't know what he's doing on there, and then look, I've got loads over there. So, I did bring with me today a couple of trays of marigolds to plant out. Now marigolds are really good for planting next to tomato plants because they deter whitefly. So whitefly don't like the smell of marigolds apparently. Unfortunately, slugs and snails do like marigolds. So I do need to protect them from slugs and snails, um, which is a bit ironic because they are supposed to be for pest control, but obviously some pests like them. So it's just one of those things, isn't it? It's a knock on effect all the time. I'm talking pest control for slugs and snails today and went a little bit mad on Amazon because a lot of you recommended a few things and these things are things that I haven't really tried and explored before with slugs and snails so I thought it's about time I gave them a go. The first thing is peppermint oil. Apparently they hate the smell of peppermint oil so what I've done is I've brought with me some cotton balls and I'm going to soak them in the peppermint oil and just leave them around my poly tunnel and see if it deters them a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. I know that peppermint oil is good against spiders. I've never heard of it for slugs and snails, so we're going to try that. Also, we've got some copper. Um, so apparently they don't like copper because it gives them an electric shock. So I've got some copper mesh from Amazon, um, which is actual real copper, and that should hopefully give them a shock. I also brought some of the, some of the copper tape, um, but somebody did say that this can sometimes just be like a shiny tape and it's not actually copper. Uh, which is why it doesn't work. So I brought the mesh as well, just in case this doesn't work. And I also went for some of this stuff, which really stinks. It's, um, I think it's it's like a wool, a wool cloth. And the idea is they don't like to go over it. I've never tried um, anything with wool before. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with it, actually. Sheep's wool. Apparently they don't like that. So, I mean, to me, it seems quite soft and nice. Like I'd make a jumper out of that, but apparently they don't like it. So we're gonna try all of this around the marigolds and see if we can keep them alive, <laughs> basically. So what we'll do is we'll start whacking these in around the place. Sometimes safety is in numbers as well. You know, like I always say, you want one carrot, plant a million. You want two courgettes, plant 17 plants. You know, safety in numbers. I think I just knocked his flower off. Well, sorry mate, I have to grow another one. So now they're in, we've got to protect them. I thought the best thing to do would be to actually find a snail as an experimental snail and see what he likes and what he doesn't like. So I think that's what we're going to do. So let's protect one, um, this one. So press it around. 
Ugh, I can see it's stringy and stuff. I just I don't understand why slugs and snails wouldn't like that. I'll press it down so that it doesn't come up or anything. Right, okay. Let's find a snail. Uh, excuse me, guys. Can I please borrow one of you for an experiment? Yeah, you'll do. Come here. I just want to see if you um if you like that. I was thinking about it. This is really delicious. This is lovely. Look, smell it. Smell it. Oh yeah, marigold. Oh my goodness, it's so delicious. Come on then. Come on then. Oh. Are you going to go over it? Oh guys, I think he doesn't like it. I can't be sure. He's sort of trying to reach over it and, and figure out what it is. I don't think he likes it when he touches it. Look. Look at that. He's sort of trying, isn't he? But he's just not sure. This is fascinating, this is. I wonder if this is how they actually test them out. Well, I'm not a scientist, but I think that's pretty conclusive, right? The snail has physically done a 180 and he is moving away from the wall. Right, that's good enough for me. Let's get out the wall. That is good enough for me. Be surrounded by sheep wool now. Hang about guys, hang about guys, the snail's back. He's having another go. He's having another go. No. He's going for it, he's on it. He's doing it. Oh no. Blooming snail, look, he's done it. He's done it, he's made it all the way to the plant. He's made it all the way to the plant. Right, you're not having it though. You're not having it, mate. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just as I was busy putting it around all the other ones, he turned around and had another go. Honestly. We're gonna try peppermint. Peppermint oil. Oh, it smells so strong. This is a proper science experiment today I'm giving you guys. Aren't you lucky? Didn't know you were getting Science Monday. Right, peppermint on. What do you think of that? Doesn't seem to be that repulsed by it, does he? Oh, he's sort of shriveling up a little bit though. Does that, is that a good thing or a bad thing? He's having a good old sniff. I don't know if he likes it or not. I don't think he likes it. I just have a feeling that he doesn't like it. Well, I don't think he likes peppermint because he is sort of retreating from it a little bit, but I don't think it'll be enough to keep him away from my plants. Do you know what I mean? Um, so maybe he doesn't like peppermint, so if I just throw these in the corner of the polytunnel it might just keep them away a little bit. So the last thing to try is copper. Let's see, let's see if that works. Oh god, falling over. I feel bad for him now, I think I'm going to give him a meal after this. Right, copper. Can you get through that copper mate? Oh, right, so He's on it. He's literally on it. He's literally on the copper, crawling up the copper. Copper doesn't seem to be having any kind of issue with the copper. What about the copper tape? Can we go on the copper tape? Yeah, he's on it. He's on it. He's literally on it. <laughs> ah! Well, I think copper's a definite no. He's literally on it again, so copper doesn't work. Right, there you go, mate. You can have a little reward now. Here you are. You can have that. For all his hard work and his experimenting with me, he gets to eat this one, because this is my spare one. So there we go. You can have that as a reward. Don't tell the others, mate, OK? So the conclusion that we've come to with all of that is that they are unstoppable. Nothing can stop them, and um, they will just keep coming. There we go. Official scientific experiment conducted. There's no stopping them. They will eat everything forever. my pond is looking a little bit messy now um, which I think is a good time to come in and just swoop in and just clear it up a little bit. So I've got this lovely water forget-me-not which has started to flower and then just underneath that look my lily pads have gone green 
and then this big plant in the middle is doing so well and these grasses are doing well these reeds or whatever they are so beautiful it's coming together look that's my mate from earlier he's following me now i think i've got a pet snail guys I think I'm going to do something now that I said I wouldn't do and that is to remove my tulip, my tulip foliage basically um, before it's properly died down. So it has started to die down as you can see. It is starting to die down and everything um, which is great and over there it's definitely starting to die down but I think this is just where slugs and snails can hide out in and I don't want them getting to my sweet corn and my runner beans so I think the best thing to do is to remove it now. The rule book says basically to leave these in until they've properly died down and then remove them and then it feeds the tulip bulb but you can't always do everything completely by the book at an allotment plot. You've got to like, you've got to go with what your plot is telling you to do, you know? Sometimes the rules have to be bent a little bit or broken. <laughs> Here they all are, hiding under the undergrowth all around here. Somebody said the best way to stop them, look he's on the fence there. Someone said the best way to stop them is to get rid of their hiding places. So where all those tulips were, they've all been sitting along here quite happily. I think that's a really, really good tip. Just get rid of the places that they can hide. They like somewhere that's dark, damp, wet, wooden usually, somewhere they can sit and wait for the next meal. So. Sorry guys, busted. <laughs> right, so I think what we'll do is we'll put out the rest of the tomatoes later in the week. Courgettes and my pumpkins will go out towards the end of the month. Brassicas, so I've got purple sprouting broccoli and stuff to go into that bed. That will go out um, in a couple of weeks time as well. And then until then, and what I'm gonna do is keep coming back, keep on top of the weeds, keep watering things, keep protecting what's here. Maybe get rid of a lot more of these tulips as well. Just because I think snails and slugs just love to hiding them. And um, yeah, just kind of keep it all alive as much as I can, I think, and keep sowing stuff at home as well flower beds looking absolutely lovely sweet peas are doing fantastic can't believe it so I'm gonna keep sewing at home I'll keep be sewing I'll keep sewing so much at home basically if I sew one courgette one week I'll probably sew two the next week as well just in case one dies and um, so I'm continually kind of sewing things at home I hope you enjoyed the vlog today if you did do leave me a comment do uh, give me a thumbs up below subscribe to my channel let me know what you thought I hope it's inspired you to get out into your allotment or into your garden and do some gardening this week. Have a lovely rest of your week and I'll see you again on Wednesday. Thanks for watching. Bye.